deal this is Achilles Drew where nailing success gets simplified welcome to my lecture today where we'll walk you through the anatomical terms and relation trust me this is the very foundation of anatomy you miss it right here you're going to miss it for a very long time so just stick with me it's going to be a really lovely session okay so now when you talk about the anatomical terms and relation there is this very first thing I would like to draw your attention to and that is the anatomical position you have to understand that whatever structure you're studying in anatomy be it the abdomen the lower limb or the upper limb any structure you're studying in anatomy the subject the subject has to adopt this very important position called the anatomical position okay so anatomical position is defined as the body being erect the body being erect now apart from the body being erect the arms are at the side that's another thing that happens in anatomical position and then aside that the palm is turned forward and take a look at this picture right here can you see the man is standing erect now apart from him standing erect take a look at his arm right here the arm is turning forward it is facing me okay so and trust me this is the anatomical position once you change this position you are having right here the structure you are studying won't be meaningful again so this is the reference position we adopt in anatomy okay right here i have a gif showing the anatomical position can you look at this gif right there yeah the young skeleton the young man right there he is standing erect and his arms are by his side and aside that the palm is turning forward all right let's move on to our next thing on the anatomical terms and relation and that's talking about some important terms that we take in pair right now the first will be superior and inferior now this pair are kind of like word and opposite right here so i will take them in pair now when you say something superior what does it mean understand that superior means towards the head when something is towards the head of your body and then when you say something is inferior what does it mean it simply means it is towards the tail of the body don't worry, we'll take a very important example right now now the example we're having right here is the heart is superior to the liver what does that mean now try and take a look at the picture we're having right here understand that this structure right here is the heart this is the human heart right here okay it's a very important structure and right here we have the liver this structure right here is the liver now i'm telling you now that the heart is superior to the liver it simply means the heart is directed towards the head compared to the liver it is closer to the head it is cranial to the head it is cranial to the liver you get that so the heart is described as being superior to the liver why definitely the liver is inferior to the heart it simply means the heart the, the, the heart is on top of the liver but the liver is located beneath it okay hope you get that so that's the exact meaning of superior and um, inferior okay let's take another example all uh, right this structure right here the structure you're having right here are the lungs how will you describe the lungs in relation to the liver okay can you take that very short classwork yeah the lungs is definitely superior to the liver while the liver is inferior to the lungs all right let's move on to our next anatomical term and that is anterior and posterior okay when you say something is anterior to another and when you say something is posterior what does these two terms mean you have to understand that sometimes anterior is described as ventra while posterior is described as dosa they mean the same thing okay all right so i will be using a very important example right here but to start with understand that anterior means towards the front of the body okay anterior means towards the front of the body why posterior means that structure is directed towards the back of the body okay now we'll be using two important examples the first will be the trachea is anterior to the esophagus the trachea 
is anterior to your sophagus. Now, you might not know the meaning of what trachea is or sophagus is known. I don't worry, I'll walk you through that. Understand that the human body has these very important tubes. Uh, there is one of these tubes conducting air. That is the trachea right here. The trachea conducts air towards the lungs. Okay, it conducts air towards the lungs. Why we have this other important tube behind the trachea? That's the esophagus. The esophagus conducts food to the stomach. Okay, note that. And this, these tubes are closely related with one another. Just that one is located in front, which is the trachea right here. The trachea is said to be in front. Why the esophagus, the one in blue, the esophagus is related at the back is it's located at the back so how will you describe this as an anatomy student it's simple you simply say the trachea which is in red right here the trachea is anterior to the esophagus it simply means it is in front of the esophagus why the trachea how will you describe the trachea in relation to the esophagus i'm um, sorry the esophagus how will you describe it in relation to the trachea yeah it is posterior the esophagus is posterior to the trachea why the trachea is anterior to the esophagus so it's that simple okay um so let's take another important example right here um this is a section to the female pelvis and where i walk you through the structure this is a this is a sagittal stretch section to the female pelvis you have to understand that right here we have the bladder to start with get your orientation right you agree with me this is the front now this region right here is the front why this region right here is the back right okay um you have to understand that this structure right here is the bladder which is kind of located in front and then posterior to the bladder we have another important structure right here this is the vagina okay this is the vagina right here and even posterior to the vagina we have another important structure the anus and the rectum they are kind of all, every, all these three structures they are closely related in the pelvis region of a female okay just that one is anterior to the other another one is posterior to the other don't worry so now taking a look at this let me ask you as an anatomy an, as an anatomist student, we've taken an example before now so take a look at this how will you describe the bladder the one in blue how will you describe the bladder in relation to the vagina the one in red right here you agree with me this is the front but right? this is the back right so i can say the bladder is anterior to the vagina very true and the same way i can also say this vagina right here is anterior to the anus very very true it simply means it is in front of it okay and the same way i can also say the anus right here the anus is posterior to the vagina is posterior located behind it and the same way the vagina is also posterior to the bladder located behind the bladder so these terms and relation are very simple you just have to get it right okay so note that about anterior and posterior so far we've talked about superior inferior now we've demystified anterior and um, posterior now let's move on to another important term and relation that is media and lateral now what does the term media and lateral mean what is the meaning of media when you say something is media and when you say something is lateral what does these two terms mean okay now you have to understand that the word media simply means near the midline of the body while lateral means far away from the midline of the body now you have to understand that in anatomy there is this reference midline of the body okay there is that standard midline running through the center of the body you have to understand that structures are described relative to this midline okay that midline is probably right here around the head running through the midline of the body ignore my straight line so now when when you describe a structure as being closer to the midline compared to the other structure it simply means that structure is media don't worry we'll use a perfect example right here now take a look at this example i can say the eye is media to the ear it simply means the eye is located closer to the midline compared to my ears okay don't forget this green line right here is the standard midline now i can say the eye is media to the ear it simply means the eye is located closer to the midline compared to my ear which is right here far away from the midline 
And the same way I can say my eye is media to my ear, I can also say my ear is lateral to the eye. It simply means the ear is located far away from the midline compared to the eye. Okay, that example um, describes media and lateral. Can we take another example? Still talking about media and lateral. Here is the midline of the body. I can say my nose is media to my eye. It simply means my nose, which is right here, is closer to the midline compared to my eyes. Okay? And take a look at it. The red, the one shaded red right here is closer to yellow compared to green. Okay? So the nose is actually media to the eye. And apart from you comparing two different structures, even on a particular structure, there can be a media side of that structure and there can also be a lateral side of that structure. Taking the eyes, for example, now. Here is the eyes, of course. Now, you have to understand that these eyes, this can be the media side of the eyes. That is the part of the eyes closer to the midline. Why this region right here can be the lateral part of the eyes. That is the part far away from the midline. Okay? So, media and lateral is not only limited to two structures. Even on a particular structure, you can have the media side of that structure and you can also have the lateral part of that structure. Okay? So, that's that about that. Now, here is a very quick quiz. Can you attend this? How will you describe the nose in relation to the mouth? Okay? How will you describe it? Answer that. Yeah, the nose is simply superior to the mouth. The nose is superior to the mouth. Don't say the nose is media to the mouth, okay? So we've described superior and media, um, superior and inferior in the previous um, slide. So let's move on now and talk about some other, some other structures. Now, we're moving to another pair of term, that's proxima and distal. What does these two terms mean? When you say something is proxima and when you say something is distal, what do they mean? Now you have to understand that proxima and distal, these are terms used for the limbs, okay? You talk about maybe the upper limb, you talk about probably the lower limb. You use proxima and distal for the limbs, okay? So now when you say something is proxima, it simply means it is closer to the trunk of the body, it is nearer to the trunk. And when you say something is distal, it simply means it is farther away from the trunk. Now, you agree with me that this is the trunk of the body, right? Everything right here is the trunk of the body. Now, you have to understand that we use um, distal and uh, proxima for limbs, of course. Now, in the upper limb, for example, now let's take a look at the upper limb. I can say my shoulder, my shoulder right here is proxima to my elbow okay i can say my shoulder is proxima to my elbow it simply means my shoulder is nearer to my trunk it is closer to the trunk of the body right here compared to my elbow okay so we use proxima distal for limbs for structures like maybe the limb upper limb or maybe the lower limb okay so in the same way the shoulder is proxima to the elbow the same way I can also say the elbow is distal to the shoulder. Okay, it simply means the elbow is farther away from the from the trunk, the point with which the the point where the limb joins with the trunk. The elbow is farther from that point compared to the shoulder. Okay, so now on the on the lower limb, so let's take another example. I can say my knee, my knee, which is right here, is proxima to my ankle it simply means my knee is closer to where the limb joins the trunk compared to the ankle okay it's closer compared to the ankle so that's that about proxima and distal please take note of these important terms and uh, relation they are very important it will help you through your knowledge of anatomy so finally now let's talk about this important term superficial and deep what does this mean you have to understand that superficial means close to the surface of the body. Why deep simply means deep within the body, okay? Now, take a look at your skin. I can say the skin is superficial to the bones. It simply means the skin 
is closer to the surface of the body compared to the bones which are located deep in the body okay so superficial and deep assembly terminologies for something close to the body or deep within the body okay so it's after you've peeled off the skin that's when you will get to the level of the bones so the bones are actually deep to the skin and here is another important example you agree with me that the human skin is made up of an outer epidermis and an inner dermis you agree with me on that yeah understand that the human skin is actually made up of two layers there is an outer epidermis in red i'm shading in red why there is an inner dermis so you have to understand that as an anatomic student i can describe the epidermis as being superficial to the dermis it simply means the epidermis is close to the surface compared to the dermis which is inside okay so that's deep and superficial for you all right now so very fast let's just take a look at the important planes of the body okay the important sectional planes of the body so now what are these anatomical planes what are they you have to understand that there are more of imaginary sections imaginary sections or lines going through the body and dividing the body into parts okay so now when you talk about the anatomical planes in anatomy you understand that there are four of them we have the median plane we have the sagittal plane we have the frontal plane and the transverse plane okay and they are all right here but to start with the median plane you have to understand that the median plane sometimes can be called the mid sagittal plane it means the same thing median plane or mid sagittal plane why sagittal plane right here simply remains as sagittal plane it is different from median plane medium plane has a mid with it mid sagittal okay you understand the reason for this as we move on and then we have this frontal plane otherwise called corona plane and then transverse plane otherwise called the horizontal plane those planes are right here we'll take them one by one okay so now taking the first one that is um the medium plane what is the medium plane okay understand that the medium plane which is otherwise called the mid sagittal plane it passes through the body and then divides the body into equal left and right okay please note that it passes through the body and then divides the body into equal okay note the equal right there so here is the medium plane otherwise called the mid sagittal plane it is passing through this man's body and whenever it passes through the body it divides that body into an equal left and right okay note that about the medial plane <clears throat> so right now let's move on to the next anatomical plane and that's sagittal plane now sagittal plane remains sagittal plane you know unlike medium plane which is called the mid sagittal plane it passes through the body and divides the body into equal left and right in the case of sagittal plane it of course passes through the body as well but it does not divide the body into equal left and right it can just pass through the body parallel to the medium plane it passes para it passes to through the body parallel to the medium plane but it does not divide the body into equal left and right take a look at the sagittal plane right here is the one in lemon okay what's the name of this color okay orange color so it is passing through the body but you will notice that the side right here will be lesser will be smaller compared to the side right here so the sagittal plane does not divide the body into equal left and right medium plane on the other hand medium plane would pass through the body and it would divide the body into equal left and right although both of them medium plane and sagittal plane they are parallel to one another they are parallel to one another just that one divides to equal parts the other doesn't so straight away let's move on to the frontal plane which is the third plane don't forget the frontal plane is otherwise called the corona plane you can see it as any of these frontal plane or corona plane they mean the same thing you have to understand that this plane passes through the side of the body it passes from one side right here and then comes out on the other side it passes from one side and then comes out on the other side and it divides the body into front and back into anterior and posterior and take a look at this plane right here take a look at this picture right here can you see the corona plane passing through one side of the body coming out on the other side and then dividing the body into a front and a back that's simply what frontal plane do okay 
and right now let's move on to the last plane of the body that's the transverse plane what does transverse plane do what does it do the transverse plane otherwise called the horizontal plane it passes through any part of the body and divides the body into a superior part and an inferior part a top and a bottom take a look at this plane right here this section right here okay that is the transverse plane and you can see it's dividing the body into a upper or a superior part and then here is the inferior part okay so that's the exact thing horizontal or transverse plane too and here is a summary picture take a look at it all the four planes are right here the first is the medium plane the medium plane is right here okay the one i'm kind of shading blue right now the medium plane is there it is passing through the midline of the body and dividing it into equal left and right now take a look at sagittal plane the one that we label yellow right now okay the sagittal plane is right here passing parallel to the medium plane but it is not dividing the body into an equal left and right this side right here will be smaller compared to this side so that's sagittal plane for you and then don't forget we have this important frontal plane let me label it red the frontal plane otherwise called the corona plane passes from side to side okay and it divides the body into where guess front and back anterior and posterior and lastly we have the horizontal plane otherwise called what otherwise called the horizontal otherwise called the transverse plane horizontal plane or transverse plane it passes through the body and divides it into a top and a bottom a superior and an inferior and that's that about the various anatomical planes here are my references references of pictures and all and that brings us to the end of this very beautiful session all right and at the description box of this video you can check it out there is a link to a quiz i've created for you once you tap on the link it directs you to telegram and right there you see a quiz i've created for you just for you to consolidate everything you've learned so far on anatomical terms and relation i'm very sure you find it helpful okay um thank you very much and do it to like our video if you find it helpful and also hit the subscribe button okay and get notification from various packages we've got in store for you hit the like button and the subscribe like right now